Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ episode 115, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, amongst our questions, we're taking a look at some important knife safety rules, as well as why you might want a blade coating on a rust resistant steel. Let's get into it. So welcome, welcome, welcome to this series, the Knife AQ. Uh, the deal with it is we get, we, or we take this opportunity to answer some of the questions from the comments section on our video. And if they, if you have a question that you would like a, uh, a shot at having answered on one of these episodes, that's what you do. You just leave it in the comment section below these videos and I will come through and see what we can pull out. First question today comes from Danger Dad. Hi DCA. I made the mistake of volunteering to teach a group of 13 to 15 year olds about knives. Uh, besides showing off my knife collection, I'm not really sure what to fill the hour long lesson time with. Uh, do you have any ideas for good knife lessons? I also want to send them home with a knife related gift, but I'm not sure how some of their parents would feel if I gave them real knives. Uh, do you have any ideas for a knife centric gift that's not a knife? Uh, I'm gonna cost maybe no more than five to 10 bucks each since I'll need to buy many of them, thanks. Sure thing. Showing off a collection is certainly fun, uh, but the thing that springs to mind for me would be uh, knife safety, especially if you, know, you, you don't mention what context this is in, uh, whether it's uh, like a scout troop or a you know, local rec center, whatever the case may be, no idea. Um, so I don't know if uh, this is like outdoor related or more general purpose related, but knife safety is good in any scenario. Um, so the things that come to mind, uh, especially if these kids are unfamiliar with knife use in general, uh, when starting out, always being able to cut away from yourself is a, is a very important thing. You know, you don't want to be like slicing thing to, things towards you. That was always a rule that was drilled into me, even though we may or may not follow it uh, all the time anymore. But you know, that's do as I say, not as I do type of thing. Um, always close the knife when you're not using it. Uh, is certainly an important thing. Goes goes to storage to store your knife with the blade closed, or if it's fixed blade with the uh, the blade protected in some fashion, not just from damage to the blade, but damage from your fingers itself. On that note, never try to catch a falling knife. Just let it fall, let it hit the floor and then pick it up uh, because you, you know, you're, the, the other part of that adage goes, a falling knife has no handle. You're bound to grab the uh, sharp edge. Don't want to do that. Um, what else? Uh, going back to, uh, to my Boy Scout days, uh, the thing that was always drilled in was when you're handing a knife to someone, wait till the other person says thank you before you let go. Again, may not be a rule we follow here in the office because we're handing knives around all day, but it is a, a good safety rule to keep in mind. Uh, if it's a fixed blade or a, a kitchen knife or something, handing the knife to the other person, handle first and edge up and away from your hand. Very safe. Um, last but not least, keep the knife sharp. Uh, maybe a, a short demonstration on uh, some sharpening principles could work uh, into this uh, presentation for you. And that truly is, I think, a, a dovetail into the safety thing, because speaking of adages, a sharp knife is less dangerous than a dull knife. Reason being, yes, if you just kind of like bounce on yourself, if the knife is dull enough, it might not do anything. But if you're using a knife that's a bit dull, could be sharpened, it's going to require more force to use properly uh, or to cut through what you need. So you're, you're fighting your muscles, you're pushing more, there's less control. And when that, if you get past the, uh, the tip over point, the knife goes rogue on you and it, it does bite into your skin, you're gonna have a much more ragged cut, some more bruising and, and blunt force impact because you're pushing the knife harder. That is a possibility as well. A shallower, cleaner cut is going to heal a lot better and usually bleed a lot less in the first place as well. So those are some good options. Nice uh, Knife Center exclusive Farmer X and Red Alox here. Uh, always love that. As for the gift, like I said, don't know whether this is like a, a scout troop. I might have a specific uh, uh, gift option or gift idea for that. 
but since it's broader, I have a couple things here uh, that could be useful. Uh, the first is not strictly knife related, but I think would make a really, uh, it, it's a good EDC item. It's a good camping and outdoor item. If this is a scout troop, uh, it's just a good item. A right in the rain, small, what is this, like a three by five pocket notebook. These are like, these are less than $4 on our site right now. And the advantage of this is you give this to them before you start the presentation and now they've got something to take notes on keeping track of the knife safety stuff and having a nice reference here for them to look back on to remember. And you know, they're 13 to 15 year olds, but if they don't have a knife already, something to show their parents saying, Hey, you know, this is what we went over. This is what I'm going to do. If you let me have a knife, that sort of thing. Really cool thing. Not that expensive uh, as well. Check those out. Um, other thing, K bar makes uh, a, a handful of kind of synthetic uh, injection molded tchotchkes, shall we say? such as this K bar knife shaped emergency whistle. And a two pack of these is like 850 less than 850 right now on our site it comes with split rings for them. And you've got the whistle thing and you've got a very knifey gift there without it being a knife. And like I said, a two packs 850. So you can split them up, you know, hand one out to, uh, you know, however many kids you, uh, you have to uh, hand out to really cool option. And then one more, uh, which is a little bit above the budget. It's about $12 a piece. Uh, there's always stuff like these JJ's knife kits. It's a small uh, wooden build your own knife kit thing here. Uh, we'll have a close up image of it right there. It's sealed. So I didn't want to go ahead and open this particular one, but those are pretty cool and pretty fun too. And it's a good way for them to practice knife safety, especially if they put this together during your demonstration, they can use that to demonstrate that they uh, have picked up on what you're saying. Uh, because after all, even though your name is Danger Dad, you don't want to get that reputation you know, telling kids about knives and, and getting them into trouble. You know, that wouldn't be good. There's more than one way to be a cool dad. There is indeed. There is indeed. Um, as I'm as I'm bound to learn here eventually, as my child gets older, and that starts to matter. My child's going to have knives, I'm sure. Probably. <laughs> I got plans. Don't worry about it. Uh, next question comes from NS 20 gun talk. Uh, so I am a law enforcement officer and I've been in the market for a belt mounted defensive fixed blade. Unfortunately, none of the sheaths that I've been looking at have active locking retention in case someone grabs them. What are some small two to four inch bladed fixed blades with locking sheaths? Got a couple here for you that could fit the bill actually several K bar uh, adjacent products showing up today. The Spartan blades professional grade Alala. This is made uh, by the K bar folks for the Spartan brand uh, regular price on this. Actually, we've got it on sale right now as we're shooting this video for about 135 cool knife 1095 carbon steel. You can get it in black or green canvas micarta handle scales here. Very stout, robust, Thing. Not a, a slicing wizard like something like the blade on a, a Swiss Army knife would be in terms of its geometrical efficiency, but super solid. And the sheath on it is injection molded, and you can see it has a tab right here. It's a little thumb push off. You have to slide that to unlock the sheath. Otherwise, that's not coming out. Maybe if it's, I don't even know, if you could super hard yank it, but. That's, that's the reason that they designed these sheaths thusly it was for exactly the sort of scenario you're talking about. But the, the cool thing about it is if someone goes to grab it, it's not going to work. But for you, it's a very intuitive movement to draw the blade because it's a kydex sheath, which most of the are on a kydex sheath, you're usually going to be pushing off with your thumb. Anyway, this kind of leans into that muscle memory right here because your thumb goes right to the switch, push up, the knife slides right out ready to go. If you're, that still makes you a little bit nervous, you want uh, even more kind of intentional retention. Uh, also made by K bar the Becker BK 11 and the BK 14. Uh, both are available. Uh, cost on them is uh, pretty decent uh, about $59 for this BK 11 right now. Uh, you can buy handle scales for this or sorry, this is the BK 14. You can buy handle scales for the BK 14 as well as the BK 11. But the sheaths that these come with injection molded as well clicks in and you've got a tab or flap, whatever you want to call it, 
U-shaped that gets pushed up into the path of the blade. So it can, actually it's not really coming loose. Something I forgot about that these do, they actually push a little bit of tension on to the sheath there to keep it from sliding out unnecessarily. Drawing it is a little more, it requires a little more in terms of prep and steps and practice because you do have to push it out of the way and then readjust your grip to grab the knife and draw. But that is also another option for you. And just like the, uh, the Spartan, we've got 1095 CV right here. Good dependable stuff. You've got the uh, coating to keep uh, the rust demons at bay, except for of course the, uh, the parts that are lasered with the logos and the edge itself and you can get handles if you want a little bit more. Super solid tools in either case. All right, next up, we're all ready to our lightning round for today. Uh, first question comes from Mr. Stevie 57. Do you guys really need all those knives? <laughs> no. Need. But what does need have anything to do with the hobby we all enjoy? Next question comes from Jeremy. Uh, why do companies like DeWalt and Milwaukee make their own knives instead of having knife companies make knives for their company? Uh, well, I think the short answer there is down to the uh, word we just mentioned, hobby. Our knife hobby is certainly a, a niche, whereas you know, hand tools, power tools are much more mainstream. Uh, so it kind of makes sense uh, from certain respects, but I will say uh, Snap-on would be the uh, notable exception. They get uh, CRKT a lot and even Gerber to make uh, some Snap-on branded tools based on stuff in their lineup, like this Montosa right here. You can get it right now for, let's see, where's the uh, the price? I cannot find my tab, yes, there it is. It's about $60 or $58 right now, or you could pay double that for a Snap-on branded version. I'm not kidding. Buy that one. <laughs> Available now at the link in the description. Uh, next. Question is from Waylon Wade. Uh, why do so many stainless steel knives have a blade coating? Uh, coating a blade to prevent rust makes sense, but what are the benefits of coating a highly stainless blade like MagnaCut? Uh, well, short answer, there's, there's two kind of dual answers there. One, let's say you've got a, uh, a tactical inspired thing, or your, uh, your mission is more tactical. Check out this knife right here. It is the James Brand Klein. Sorry, I have to remember the name. MagnaCut blade. Everything is blacked out except for the logo uh, and the edge, of course. And in a tactical situation, that's keeping reflections down, which could be a component needed for a mission. Uh, another example would be like this Lion Steel LE1, collaboration with Ernest Emerson. Has a few more uh, brightened bits, but you've also got a Magna Cut blade here, just like on the James Brand knife. So this definitely presents a, uh, a much um, more subdued alternatives to, to some of the brightly colored versions they do have. But the other thing, apart from, you know, keeping reflections down is sometimes it's all about style. I mean, check out this tactile turn rock, tactile knife company, Rockwall, with Magna Cut Blade and a black DLC coating. It looks fantastic, but it is not a tactical knife whatsoever. And now we come to our final question of the day, which is, of course, our most serious question of the day which comes from Nazado7. Do you know any knife or steel based pickup lines? Got one. Hey, are you from Malibu? Cause you've been flipping through my thoughts all day. Eh? We've established that I'm a dad. So this is, this is my dad joke pickup line here. <laughs> Here's where I'm, I'm gonna turn the comments section loose. What are your knife or steel based pickup lines? Love, I'm, I'm really excited and a little trepidatious to hear them. Keep it clean, keep it classy. There are ladies present here, gentlemen. The ladies could of course uh, put their lines down there as well. Don't mean to exclude anyone. But yeah, keep it classy. When this video posts, I'm gonna be out of town for a couple of days. I don't wanna have to come back and, uh, and, and clean up after all you people. There we go, it's been said. And that's all we have for today. So. Let me know what you thought of the questions. Let me know if you've got some different answers or suggestions or pickup lines down in the comments. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, I shouldn't have opened I'm the- nervous. Yes, yeah, this, this could end very poorly. Keep it clean, keep it classy. If you wanna get your hands on any of these products, check out the links in the description. Those will take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're gonna be spending your money on one of these knives, 
you might as well earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.